ସମସ୍ତଙ୍କୁ ମୋର ପ୍ରଣାମ ଆପଣ ମାନେ କେମିତି ଅଛନ୍ତି ସମସ୍ତେ ଆଜ ମୁଁ ଆପଣ ମାନଙ୍କ ଗହନାରେ ଉପସ୍ଥିତ ଥିବାରୁ ବହୁତ ଖୁସି ମାନେ କରୁଅଛି Apologies for the pronunciation errors, if any, but I'm really, really happy to be amongst all of you today. Uh, it's a great honor and um, even more so as a student of history to be present in this uh, historic city of temples, Bhubaneswar, um, with its proximity to Puri, uh, Lo- uh, the home of Lord Jagannath, Bhubaneswar itself being the home of uh, uh, the Lingaraj temple. And not only that, its proximity to uh, the Jain caves of Udaygiri and Khandagiri, the Hathi Gumpha inscription of Kharavela, um, as well as the Dhauli elephant, the Dhauli rocky dick. So it's truly a pleasure to be in this historic land and to be amongst all of you, uh, such excited faces uh, that I'm able to um, see today. So I'm thankful to the Lipsar, I'm thankful to Vajirao y- uh, IS Academy uh, to bring me here uh, and to get an opportunity to interact with all of you. Um, first of all, um, I'd like to say that all of you are uh, really brave people uh, who have taken on this uh, examination. I've heard that some of you are already uh, preparing for this examination associated with this institution. Some of you are planning to do so. So um, it's, it's, it's really brave of you to take on this challenge of sitting for what some people call uh, the most competitive examination of the country. Some people even say the most uh, tough examination in the entire world. So um, I firstly congratulate you for your aims, for your dreams that you've set uh, so high. Um, but at the same time, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm not going to lie to all of you. I'm not going to paint only a rosy picture. I, I'll, I'll tell you that it's going to be a tough journey. It's not, it's not an easy path. There will be ups and downs. Uh, there'll be times when you feel like you uh, don't want to study anymore. You feel uh, even if you're studying, you're not uh, getting what you desire. So those uh, things will always be there as uh, they are in other aspects of life. Uh, but at the same time, you must also realize that uh, it's not people who drop in from another planet who uh, tend to achieve their dreams or achieve whatever they want to. It's people like you and me. And before 30th uh, June, uh, even I didn't know that I would be standing here today. So, um, and, and I think the beauty of this examination is uh, when you see the diverse nature, the, the diversity in the, in the results that we also often get. So there are people represented from all over the country. Uh, from almost all states of the country. There are people from rural backgrounds. There are people from urban backgrounds. There are people who have gone to the best colleges and universities. At the same time, there are people who have gone to their local uh, government schools in extremely rural backgrounds, having farming backgrounds. So I think um, more important than anything else in this uh, preparation is uh, this strong will to succeed. And I hope that all of you, um, with the correct preparation, with the current, correct strategy, with the correct guidance, as well as, of course, your hard work, your self-discipline, I'm sure that all of you will achieve your dreams uh, someday. Uh, for some of you, it may be the civil services examination. But even if you don't manage to crack this examination, or even if you have something else in mind, even if something else uh, excites you or is your passion, I hope that all of you achieve your dreams. Uh, so before anything else, I'd like to say all the very best for all your future endeavors. Um, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm no one to come and give you success mantras or tell you I'm also at the very beginning of my journey. So I'm not going to tell you uh, success mantras as to how to succeed in life. All I can do is tell you about my journey. And um, if that resonates with you, if you find things uh, that uh, you think may work out for you as well, because everyone has a different strategy, everyone has different priorities in life, everyone has uh, different things that they want to achieve and different ways as to how to do it. So I can only tell you my journey, how I managed to deal with certain things, the problems that I faced, how I managed to overcome them. And all that I can say is if you have decided to enter this examination, know wh- why you're doing it, uh, know what is your goal and what is it that motivates you that is uh, asking you to sit for this examination. Make sure it's not just external pressure. Um, 
and if you if you have taken that journey uh, started that journey it's uh, it's possible that some of you may not succeed but whatever the outcome is um you'll come out richer you'll come out gaining a lot more knowledge a lot more experience and uh, whatever comes at you try to look at it as an experience that is going to teach you um and try to not get disheartened it's easy to say that uh when you've uh, sort of gain some sort of uh, success or when you're on the other side of it but um try to look at things with a positive outlook try to look at whatever positive that you can get out of it so uh, uh enough with this uh, bhashan i'll start with my um, as to how i um started my preparation and what motivated me uh towards it so firstly i um, even during school um i did not always think that i'll become a civil servant it was not something that was in my head but i was always clear that i wanted to do something where i would be working with people where i would be working on the ground so even in school um in 5th uh, in uh, starting from 6 7 we had this option of choosing a club in school uh, so there used to be options like um, uh, music or dance or uh, debating so those things also i sometimes participated in but my main club that i chose was community service where we used to stay back after school teach uh, children from the nearby government schools even after that so i think it was always something that i wanted to do but it was only later when i saw examples around me of people who were bringing about a change in society that i thought that the civil services or the administrative services specifically uh, would be a way in which i would be able to do that to the best of my ability so um and there were uh, um, again many examples in front of me who showed me that so uh, while i was uh, while i had started reading i saw examples of an ias officer ms lakshmi priya in assam in bongaigaon who through little initiatives that she had started um project sampurna in assam tackling the problem of malnutrition or akhi ravi krishna in telangana who had um begun this uh, process of goody cheruvu initiative in which he managed to raise the water table by about 6 meters so these were things with slight changes and with the right will they were bring, able to bring about a huge change to the people around them so people like these motivated me and uh, i thought to myself that this is probably one platform where i can best uh, serve my country in a way so this was my idea um towards the end of my graduation latter half of my graduation i decided uh, that this is what i'm going to do after my graduation i started preparing for this examination uh, there were again as i said many downs uh, in this preparation as well so two things that immediately come to my mind when i was asked is um, so i i gave my first attempt in 2020 uh, which was uh, last year this was 2021 uh, the attempt that i managed to succeed in in that attempt i cleared my preliminary examination while i was i clearly remember that day also i it was around uh, 11 12 at night uh, quite late and i was just going through my detailed application form to correct any minor errors that before submitting it finally and i just realized that my medium for the mains examination a gs papers the general studies papers was hindi and i remember i kept staring at it for a really long time because i couldn't believe that it was hindi uh that again is an entirely different story but uh, we tried to make uh, go to upsc many times and try to uh, make that change again there was some technical error due to which it had happened i still don't know how it had happened but uh, the thing was that it had happened there was nothing that could change it and there were two only two opportunities and two options available in front of me either i could forego my attempt and uh, leave it and wait for the next mains and prepare for the next mains and next prelims or i could do whatever i could in those two months and try to give the examination in hindi and um, i chose the latter i and uh, i think at that time for, even for a second i think it did not occur to me that i could uh, somehow leave it and i think i am no one to preach but i just like to say that anything that life gives you i think it's always a good idea to take it for the positive and it's often said that life is 20% sorry life is 20% what is given to you and 80% of what you make of it or what you see it as so i probably saw it as another opportunity to learn hindi better or learn uh, my language better so so in those two months so things like um, uh, it's easy to learn because i liked hindi reading hindi hindi is my mother tongue but learning it in a completely different way in terms of technical terms was a whole new challenge so uh, uh, gdp became sakal gharelu utpad um, uh, uh, 
लॉन्गिट्यूड एंड लैटिट्यूड बिकीम अक्षांश देशांतर उपोषण कटिबंधीय उष्ण कटिबंधीय टेम्परेट ट्रॉपिकल इट वॉज अनदर चैलेंज ऑल टूगेदर बट इट वॉज ऑल्सो एक्साइटिंग सो आई थिंक इट्स हाउ यू लुक एट इट एज वेल दैट वॉज द फर्स्ट दिस थिंग एंड आई एंड इट्स अ लाइकली दैट यू विल फेल ऑल्सो और हाउ यू डिफाइन फेलियर इज ऑल्सो अनदर मैटर सो आई मिस्ड द इंटरव्यू कॉल बाय वन मार्क बट आई थिंक आई लर्न but even that missing i took it as a challenge because i was positive that if i can do it in hindi and still miss it by one mark if i do it in english which i'm much more comfortable with it's much more likely that i will succeed so i took it as a motivating factor so this was the first thing uh, the second time where i felt was a little uh, down uh, downward curve in my preparation was this times means uh, where i was really really um, sick and i had high fever i had um, i was there was a lot of fatigue so there was a point in time two two days before my optional papers two days i couldn't study at all i couldn't even pick up a book uh, two days before it i was uh, literally texting my mother on whatsapp things that i wanted because i didn't have the energy to speak this is not something that i'm exaggerating but uh, it was there was so much fatigue in my body but at that point you know that you know there are three days to go you can either give it your all and not regret it later or relax at that point and regret ki if i had pushed myself during those three days so that's what i told myself it's just three more days two more days one more day i literally pushed myself to the hilt uh, till i finally <laughs> wrote my last word and heaved a sigh of relief on the last day of my optional papers so i was asked to talk about certain ups and downs in my journey so this is what i'm going to uh, what two things that came to my mind and the only thing i can say is uh, all of us have our own experiences all of us have make our own mistakes and i made mistakes and the only thing is not to repeat those mistakes to learn from them and go forward and take anything that uh, life gives you as a challenge go go with it with a problem solving approach a solution oriented approach as to this is something that is thrown at me how can i best maneuver it how can i go about it um and i think that's a positive way to look in life uh, to look at life and keep you more happy i feel if nothing else um coming to my actual preparation so this is when i turn to how i prepared uh, for this examination as all of you know or some of you know who are preparing for this examination it uh, consists of three different stages the preliminary examination the mains examination and the personality test or the interview so um firstly it's not uh, it's important to understand that it's not a clear cut division you can't just prepare for prelims you can't just prepare for mains you can't just prepare for interview it's a holistic preparation it's an integrated preparation where your foundations need to be very very strong and um i made sure that there were two three things that i kept in mind first was keeping my sources limited so whatever uh, subjects that i had i used to rely on one maximum two books for my very very basic uh, preparation mostly they were the ncrts or any other basic books if you are going for any coaching classes uh, stick to any one coaching class and just uh, add add the things that uh, you may find from the newspaper or anything else right so sticking to the basic book sticking to the ncrt sticking to whatever one book that you have decided for each subject for getting the hang of the subject right um apart from that uh being very very true to the syllabus and this becomes even more important in the mains examination because one thing uh, about this examination is that there's too much to read there's a over abundance of information there is over abundance of material in the market there is over abundance of uh help that is given to you there is over abundance of advice that is given to you every other person will come and uh, start giving you advice about you know this is what you should do this is what you should do but you should know what uh, you have to do and your best guide for that according to me is the syllabus and previous year question papers so these two personally were guides for me especially in the mains examination as to what to read and what not to read so even when you're going through a book uh, that is being given to you try to orient it with the syllabus that is provided and see acha this is something that can be answered or looking at previous year question papers that these are certain certain questions that are answered and um, which will help me so overall as an integrated preparation i'll talk about specific uh, prelims means as well but overall uh, sticking keeping your source material limited also for current affairs also for the basic static material uh, secondly keeping coming back to the syllabus coming back to previous year question papers and uh, thirdly uh, of course is revision so whatever you do uh, it's it's uh, even if it's the topper even if it's uh, someone who gets really high marks 
uh, the first time you read anything, the next time you come, come, come at it, it will be as if you've never read it uh, before in your life. And this is something that all of us, everyone who has started preparing has gone through. So make sure that you go back to it. Keep on going back to it rather than spreading your preparation wide. Rather than, you know, reading five books for the same topic, read one book but read it five times or read it three times until you completely imbibe it. Right? Um, this is overall for integrated preparation. Uh, specifically for the three stages, there are certain slight tweaks to this preparation that you start making. So after you're done with your basic books, uh, I'll talk about prelims specifically. So... While your basic preparation is the same for prelims, um, I personally found it one of the most challenging uh, phases of this examination as compared to the mains and interview. I found the prelims most challenging because I always felt that there was a matter of um, uh, luck also involved in it. Uh, the questions sometimes were very random, but I think uh, I still managed to clear it uh, both times. And the reason may be, looking back, at that time I was as nervous as any of, um, of all of you, but... Um, I again try to stick to the basics. So firstly, uh, the previous three, four months before the mains exam, uh, before the prelims examination, I devoted mainly to prelims. At that time, mains uh, preparation went into a backseat around three to four months. If you have not cracked this examination before, if it's the first time you're or appearing, or if it's something that you regularly fail in, if you've failed two prelims, then you can probably uh, ex uh, uh, increase that time. You can go from three to four months, or even some people even take five months for complete prelims preparation. But mainly I think basic books are very important. And if you look at the questions in the past two years or two, three years, um, it's not something that you'll get out of a book straight. But it, if you have an understanding of the concept, and that's where uh, conceptual understanding becomes important, you should not read a book just for completing that book. You know, I've read that book. The reading that book is not important, understanding it is important. So if there are certain concepts in, say, geography uh, about... Um, folding and faulting of rocks or science, uh, some science concepts or some economic concepts about macroeconomic theory. If you're not understanding it, go look at other sources. Go and ask a teacher. Go and ask a friend. Go and look up something on YouTube, uh, some small video that you find about it. Understand what it means so that you can better apply it in the prelims examination because a lot of application-based questions are being asked. So unless and until you understand the concept, you won't get it. And here I used to focus uh, also a lot on... Um, Polity and economics, because polity and economics, if you look at, if you look at analyze previous year question papers, uh, polity uh, papers are um, something that you can still prepare for, because you have your basic book, whatever you're uh, relying on, be it Lakshmi Khan, be it something else, uh, and you, you basically stick to that book and uh, go through the constitution, so I also went through the Bear Act. And if you have a basic understanding of all the articles, all that, it's likely that you can answer a, a lot of uh, polity questions. Similarly for economics, uh, current affairs is there, but more than that, understanding of what is, uh, you know, uh, monetary policy, what is fiscal policy will be, uh, will better, uh, will be um, fruitful in sort of answering those questions. So in terms of time and uh, effect or time and um, sort of results that come out of it, I felt polity and economy I used to give a lot of importance in because I could rely on those uh, subjects. Other things I felt were more uh, random. So this was my personal strategy. Everything should be given importance, but these things you should like not leave at all is something that I'm trying to say. Make sure that your basic things and basic concepts are uh, very, very um, strong. Secondly, for current affairs, so current affairs, again, I'll talk about it later as well, but uh, for this, for prelims, I used to rely on the uh, yearly compilations. Uh, any sort of yearly compilations of current affairs you get, some people use monthly compilations as well, so whatever works for you, but make sure that you have one source, because current affairs is a sea of information, and once you get lost in it, some people go through daily current affairs and weekly, and so just make sure that you have one source. Add on it from your newspaper if you read the newspaper. I used to stick to a newspaper as well. But um, for the prelims, I mainly used to rely on the yearly compilations, go through it two, three times. And um, so that because sometimes people give in a lot of time. And because the nature of examination is changing, uh, you don't get that reward out of it if you spend too much time going through three different magazines of current affairs. Thirdly, after your base concept is done, and even in between also, once you complete a subject, try to do, try to solve questions of it. And for that, you can enroll yourself in any test series or take any uh, questions from the market that you get. So as a test series was one thing that used to help me in, uh, firstly, completing the syllabus and understanding, Acha, this is something that if I used to complete economics, I used to go and solve a test of economics. 
um, if I used to complete polity. So it gives you an analysis as to how much, uh, how how uh, how well you have read the basic books. Okay. Apart from that, a uh, practice of not just uh, test series but also previous year papers because previous year papers are important in helping you understand the language of the questions, the nature of the questions, and also. Um, the nature is also sometimes that you don't get it from a book. So you also get the knack of eliminating questions or getting to know that this is something uh, that I can do if something like that comes or uh, trying to find corollaries in other papers. So question, uh, previous question papers are really important. I often give examples of where even questions are repeated. So uh, say a question on um, right to privacy being part of which, which fundamental right was a question that was repeated verbatim. Similarly, there was a question on economics in economics that was repeated within a matter of two, three years. So it's a reward that you get. Similarly, questions on uh, history. So uh, 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 last year, I think, uh, the, the year before this, there was a question on Mongols. And someone who had probably gone back and looked up what the Mongols were when they came to India uh, would have maybe be, uh, been able to answer the question that came this year. So both here there was a question on Mongols with slight differences and the other options if one had analyzed one could probably answer uh, the question that came this year. So going back to previous year question papers, not only the question but also Google searching other words, um, other options, looking back at the subject is something that really helped me which probably helped me get through prelims at both um, in, in both years that I gave this examination. So basic books, current affairs, test series practice, uh, at least three, four months pehle uh, I used to do a lot of uh, test series uh, in the last three months. Before that also you can beach beach me do if you want. Uh, it also helps you understand how many questions you want to attempt in the final paper. So if you have good accuracy, uh, some people go for 80 questions or even less or I personally went for a lot of questions. I went for uh, 90-95 questions uh, but it depends. So all of that you will analyze when you're doing these test series and you're understanding uh, which questions to attempt, which not to attempt because negative marking also pulls people down. Um, apart from that, previous year question papers analysis not only for practice but I used to figure out um, uh, things that I'll uh, make notes of separately, which I couldn't find in any book. So in the previous year papers, if I'm finding a lot of questions on Buddhism and Jainism, and I'm not finding that specific content in a book, so I used to make one or two page notes uh, based on Google search, based on going through a certain book, and revise them later. Similarly for maps, because maps is something that fetched you uh, five, six uh, questions sometimes. So going through maps, so I used to make a, a, a timetable before the prelims that every day for the last two months I used to devote uh, say 15 minutes or half an hour to just the map questions because you can't do all of them in one day. Uh, so just looking at a, a certain continents map or going through certain videos that you find on YouTube, anything like that. So these are things that you have to figure out by analyzing and these are things that you know no one will specifically tell you also you will have to do this hard work yourself. Sometimes you just rely on other toppers, notes are there, toppers, this thing is there, we'll just go and you know use it. That process of going through it yourself is also important. Even if you're taking toppers notes, so I used to take sometimes uh, look at toppers answer copies or to look, take, it, take toppers notes from certain sources, but making that your own as well. Going through that, adding stuff on your own, regularly revising it until you make it your own is also important. Okay, similarly, for CSAT, for indexes, schemes, I used to make certain things, certain parts of the day which required regular revision. So I used to do that, devote 10-15 minutes every day rather than, you know, sitting one day entirely where it doesn't all go into your head. So whatever works for you, try to make a, a, a timetable that works for you, try to make a schedule that works for you rather than blindly aping the person next to you or getting, you know, rattled that, you know, this person is doing this book, it, it looks better, maybe he knows more or she knows more. Have faith in yourself, have faith. Firstly, strategize and once you strategize, have faith in whatever path you're following by making slight changes that you uh, find necessary. So this was my prelims preparation. Next comes mains. And within mains, I'll talk about two main things um, as separate topics as well. Uh, two things which were important for me. One is answer writing. The second is note making. So um, for answer writing, uh, I think there are a lot of uh, things that are important. And I managed to get uh, decent uh, marks in my uh, GS papers and my optional uh, as well. And I felt one reason for that was also, looking back again I can say, is um, answer writing. I used to practice answer writing and not just practice it, but analyze how I've written those answers and build up on them uh, later as well. 
so um firstly i think uh, what is important is understanding the question and this is some uh, it's a very easy thing to do but uh, lots of people don't do it and i feel that if you just understand the question and answer what is being asked half your battle is won because this is one of the challenges that i personally also feel, uh, faced in the early uh, part of my preparation you would just and even in that time when you're writing uh, the examination in the mains hall there are two challenges one is um, content you have to write good content the other is time the clock is constantly ticking on your head so maintaining that balance becomes very important either you're writing really good answers but you're leaving five questions at the end which doesn't uh, help because the competition is so much or you're completing it in the time limit you're scribbling your way till the end but the content is not good so managing that for managing that only practice is the way and not just practice but correct practice so firstly is understanding the question there are certain keywords also used in the question evaluate analyze this that and it's not it's important not just to jump at the only word you know and start writing about it it's important to understand why this question is being asked and cater to that as well so um, say this time there was this question on evaluate the nature of bhakti literature and its contribution to indian culture so sometimes when you don't know enough about bhakti literature you will just start writing about bhakti you will start writing about nanak you will start writing about chaitanya mahaprabhu this that and half your page is done then you will write one two points about bhakti literature or something the important thing is even if you don't know exactly what um how say bhakti literature what the nature is its contribution is try to orient your answer according to the demand of the question so start writing about bhakti literature only start writing about um, so i think in this uh, paper in this question what i did also i made so although it's not required but for visual presentation i made this map of india slightly on the corner and i and i jotted it down jotted the different uh, bhakti literature across the map or uh, on the map itself so say the bishunpad or mirabai's this thing everything uh, lal deeds uh, this thing abhangs in uh, the in 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 maharashtra and all that so even at a glance you could just see what those things were about then the nature of bhakti literature so look at the keywords and this is something that i used to do i used to divide uh, the question based on the question and on the word that were used so nature of bhakti literature what is the nature so say devotional and then give an example uh, try to give what you're seeing and provide an example to it so the examiner doesn't have to think too much the examiner knows that you know this is what she means and this is how she's displaying it so nature of bhakti devotional then uh, poetic uh, so you talk about certain poetry compositions then something else something else then the second part of the question was its contribution to indian culture so the contribution you think about and when you make these headings even if you didn't know the answer yourself you start making links in your head also acha what can be the contribution of bhakti literature it can possibly be to uh, you know uh, bringing about this temple uh, temple tradition how it how how these bhakti songs were sung in the in the temples how that created a come uh, uh, this thing the musical culture that probably developed out of it so these are things that you won't read but you you can associate with things around you and sath sath mein you are providing examples about say shankracharya uh, and these are things that will come because we have things that we have seen in our homes we have seen somewhere else so if you just stick to the wordings in the question what is being asked in the question rather than coming back to only what you've read in the books you know bhakti acha bhakti i read in that book nanak was written kabir was written so i'll just write that that won't fetch you marks understand what the question is try to relate it with your uh, environment ar- around you and try to answer those questions in that way so firstly most important understanding what the question is there were questions in gs3 this time which none of us knew like there were half the questions were random questions but i still managed to get i think later i got to know decent marks there because i tried to um reorient what i i knew according to the demand of the question rather than just writing anything i knew or just leaving those uh, papers blank so understanding the question answering only what the question is ans- asking is important secondly uh content so this again uh, was another example i wrote down analyze distinguishing features of the notion of equality in the constitutions of usa in india so this was a, i think a 15 marker question and there are not too many differences but what sometimes people do uh, did was they didn't know differences in equality so they wrote differences in the constitutions of usa in india but that's not what the question is asking so try to answer what are the differences in equality if you if you're not getting try to reorient the question the, the differences you know between the constitution in terms of equality try to shape what you know in terms of the demand of the question so these are uh, two examples that i remember 
secondly is content so first is you understood the question but if you don't have the content how will you do it so that content wala thing you have to do the background work and that is when i'll come to note making and all of that uh, in the examination hall during those 3 hours you don't have the time to think you don't you can't just sit around and think acha this that all of that you need to do before the examination and your content to a large extent apart from on the spot thinking needs to be prepared for that for example gs2 uh, which is polity and all i had prepared uh, lists of lists or in the sense topics and committees that i could quote say in railways i will uh, talk about the anil kapoorkar committee in something else i'll talk about the second arc and the recommendations that get, that they've given so you're not just writing random things but you're adding to it once your basic and this is only this can only be done once your concepts are clear if you're starting your preparation and you start doing this it won't fetch you anything because you your basics are not clear yet but once your basic content is done to make it better so my aim was in answer writing this year to make my answer better from the person before and after me and how could i do it by adding content to it so say committees in gs2 then gs4 is ethics so i used to look at the newspaper pick keep pick up picking up examples and quotes and keep writing them down keep using them in my papers so gs4 there were committees then gs3 uh, so if for economics um some data that i found in the newspaper or say the uh, recently a national health survey has come so if the popul a question on population i think this time was asked so talk about the data in that uh, national health survey talk about say the sex ratio how it has changed so it adds a certain value and you feel that you know what you're talking about rather than just you know saying things in the air it adds some heft to your answers so content is something that you can work on before you're writing the paper uh, specifically for different uh, papers different things you can do thirdly even if you have content even if you have you have understood the question a challenge comes in putting it on paper and i had a humanities background i had uh, the habit of writing really long answers i wrote eight pages answers in the in my graduation papers where you know you had to write four four questions in like two hours or uh, three hours so changing that to the demand of this paper was definitely tough but i managed to do that i had started with a very different writing style i ended with a very different write, writing style so that is something that all of you can do so i used to write in paragraphs i used to write really long introductions but i tried to press a lot of information later on in points so before i was writing the paper i used to think uh that you know this is a problem this is an issue that happened with me last time i used to do this so this time i'll try to do at least this i'll try to at least uh, make the uh, introduction only two lines or three lines or i'll try to introduce if i could write only three points in my last paper because i was writing in paragraphs i'll try to write at least five points this time so these are things before i was writing i used to tell myself and try to you know implement it so maybe you won't write five maybe you'll write four but next time maybe you'll make that jump to a five next time you'll maybe make that jump to a six so these are things that you told yourself in terms of structuring the answer what i used to do was um i used to use subheading so things like i said initially evaluate the nature of bhakti literature contribution so i used to write a, sh a short introduction about uh, the bhakti tradition and um, some i think i some quote or something in sanskrit i wrote i think in the first introduction for this thing uh, about bhakti lit ha how about it coming uh, from the root bhaj or to uh, incorporate or uh, something uh, involve yourself in the divine i wrote that i wrote that introduction then i made a subheading about nature of bhakti literature and i started writing from here so the nature of bhakti literature i wrote here then the points i started writing uh, leaving a certain gap so in terms of visual structuring it, it becomes easy for the examiner to uh, examiner to see and understand even if your writing is not good some people have that problem but if you have it clearly divided so if right here you're writing uh, the heading then start starting from here you start writing the points 1 2 and 3 if you have an example i used to write it further to this side and make a triangle so i used to write example and make a triangle there so when you're looking at a paper uh, the examiner could see that she has used four examples because there were four triangles that that, that were drawn so this this structuring is something that you will get over a period of time i also looked at other toppers copies i incorporated whatever i saw in it so using subheadings um underlining uh, starting writing in points so you know need not write very long sentences you can skip out the a and the sometimes not that the person shouldn't understand only what you're writing but you can leave out certain things you can just write the basic basic terms so points is something that i used subheadings underlining in terms of visual structuring i talked about spacing so spacing was something that i used um maps which i talked about in the first paper similarly for um, so for geography and these are things that you can't do in the paper uh, because you can't think that much so 
practice the india maps practice the world maps that is something that i used to do and uh, stay for geography i had two pages i just went through all the ncrts picked up all the diagrams that i could use and do them on two pages similarly for economics i was just going through the monthly magazines or yearly magazines or any other source that i found and just drew the you know charts or flow charts that i could draw so there was this chart on financial inclusion and i knew that if a question on financial inclusion came by chance i could draw it and it could add some sort of value to my answer so these are things that you drew before and then before the examination you just went through them ki acha this is something that i can draw towards the end this is what you do you focus on the committees you focus on the examples you focus on these diagrams so these are things that you can directly reproduce in the paper if the question comes don't just do it just for the heck of it sometimes people do that also randomly they're doing diagrams randomly they're doing charts you need to do it only so that it makes your answer better don't unnecessarily bombard your things with these visual things but if it's making your answer better definitely do it because it adds some sort of diversity from the paper before and after you and all of this is done but more than that it's practice you can just do this one day and not do it later and it will be of no effect at all so this is something that you need to do on a regular basis every day when you're looking at the newspaper you need to pick up examples every day when you're looking uh, or even every day when you're writing you need to come back to the notes that you've made that is important so practicing and uh, more than practicing analysis also so sometimes what people do is they practice answer writing every day they write three answers every day four answers every day i used to apart from the test series so i um, uh the later test series that i joined i also did practice uh, within a group of friends three four friends we had we used to uh, practice previous year question papers and look at each others answer copies and see acha your introduction is better so this is if this question comes this introduction can be used or this example is better so i'll incorporate that there so even if you're writing three questions come back and analyze acha this is something that i could have added this is something that was in my notes so maybe if i could put here put it here coming back to my notes so that will take a, some time it won't be ki uh, you know just wrote closed your copy next day wrote closed your copy that won't help at all practice plus analysis and using that analysis in the next time that you write your answers so that is something that probably helped me in my answer writing um, process so this was my answer writing specifically apart from that for so mains preparation the basic books you would have already gone through three or four times and yeah this is something that i uh, forgot to say but um, for me personally prelims me i at least made sure that i had done three revisions in those three or four months before of the basic books that i had or whatever uh, thing that i was following whether it be its spectrum for history or anything or the ncrt for geography i used to make at least two three revisions it depends on you how much you've read that paper if you're doing it for the first time maybe more maybe less but just to make sure that it sticks in your head so those revisions you've already done before here also now you can go through whatever basic books that are required so for mains you need to stick more to the syllabus i feel rather than just sticking to a book because book you have gone through your concepts are clear but orienting them to and there are certain topics which you won't find in books or you'll have to look uh, say for example um governance topics if you find a, a book on governance or some uh, notes on governance uh, coaching notes that's well and good if not uh, try to make small one page notes of it uh, say i used to make notes apart from that so the second topic apart from answer writing is note making for some people note making does help for some people it doesn't it depends on your way of studying for me it did help so i'll talk about myself uh, i did not make notes of all the basic books some people do that i did not uh some sometimes for say for example for geography if i'm going through it there are certain data about say crops uh, their percentage in uh, world uh, crops and indian crops so i used to make a small chart towards the end of the chapter itself and agar end mein revision karna hota tha so i used to go through that but mostly i did not make uh, notes of the basic books because i thought they were well enough they were uh, like compact enough and i used to just underline things that i thought were important when i was doing revision but um for certain topics in the syllabus which i felt i could not find information elsewhere if i thought there were certain current affair topics in the news in the newspaper which were going on for a really long time say the farmer bills if it's going on for a really long time i'll make one or two pages notes out of it uh, so i can use it say in agriculture or if i find say an article on fertilizer policy in the newspaper so i used to not make notes of newspaper per se some people make copious everyday notes of the newspaper i did not find that helpful because at the end you have like a huge um, 
this thing of newspaper it takes a lot of time in the day so i did not find that helpful some people do um, but uh, i used to just pick up things that i found in the newspaper which were important according to the syllabus so fertilizer policy i know came come in the agriculture part of gs3 so that awareness of the syllabus that uh, you know familiarity with the syllabus you need to build over a period of time and make notes according to that so that fertilizer thing that i made then i used to leave uh, some space on the side so if i find anything else i'll keep on adding that later similarly for say um, cyber crime or um, yeah so cyber crime or something like that was in the syllabus uh, clearly mentioned so for that i had made one or two pages notes any example that i found of say some attack that happened here some red dot network uh, attack happened there or estonia may there was this cyber attack uh, those things i used to keep on adding and then use them in my answers so these things like enhance your answers a bit some other people are just writing whatever notes that they found or whatever book that they used but when you see examples of say acha us mein ye wala attack happened shadow network ye ho gaya ya pegasus attack ye ho gaya to it adds some some newness and the examiner thinks that she knows what's happening and she can li- make these links so these additions i used to keep on making from the newspaper uh, apart from making my main notes uh, that i used to do according to the syllabus according to any topic that was in the news um why are note making why is note making important according to me um and and that is the way you should make those notes because sometimes what note making what people do is ke acha notes banane hai Uh, किसी किसी ने बोला है कि नोट्स बनाने इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट सो आई विल मेक नोट्स एंड दोज नोट्स डोंट सर्व एनी अ पर्पज बिकॉज इट्स मोर एस यूर रिपीटिंग एंड यूर कॉपिंग वट एवर वॉज इन द बुक यू जस्ट लिटरली रिमूव अ फ्यू वर्ड्स एंड यू राइट दम इन योर ओन वर्ड्स और यू राइट दम बाई रिमूविंग ए एंड द सो दैट डजेंट हेल्प एट ऑल बिकॉज you should understand why you are making them there's a purpose to the note making so firstly according to me it's to pry out or take out the important stuff or what is important so you're removing what is not important and what is uh, of most importance in using it so the notes the next time you make uh, like if it's 100 words you sh- it should come down to at least 40 or 50 uh, otherwise there's no point to making it or even less if you can the smaller they are and how if you can understand it understanding should also be there it's not as if ki agli bar aap padho aapko samajh nahi aa raha aapne kya likha hai because itna chota kar diya but you should understand it should be for yourself so prying out the important information collating important information because uh, see if it's a topic in the syllabus uh, it's possible that you can find good information from two sources so sometimes i used to make notes collating those two sources or uh, if it's a topic in the syllabus i used to do a google search find four five sites and just take out important bits important examples and make one information so uh, taking out important stuff so reducing it secondly collating uh, information from a couple of sources keep on adding to it some people used to make online notes that you can also do i used to find it more comfortable writing so that was my personal preference it's sometimes easier to make online notes because it can be easily edited so that is also something you can do on evernote or anything or any um, any any thing on your laptop also you can make uh, thirdly revising the, the uh, revising ke liye it's important because immediately before uh, this examination and it specially helped me for my optional because optional history was very very vast i could not possibly have gone through all the books before uh, my examination so i used to make notes those notes itself were also pretty big because even after condensing the syllabus was that vast but it helps you for revision because in the end you can only look at at those notes so it needs to be short so for revision for collation and for uh, highlighting important stuff and c- gradually reducing it so sometimes people make two uh, notes two times firstly notes and then notes of notes to even shorten it towards the end for extremely last minute revision just keywords so that is something that you can do um which books and which areas you're making notes of you need to decide no one else will tell you according to your needs secondly they need to be crisp i've already to- uh, told you and thirdly they need to be oriented to the syllabus don't write random stuff they need to be oriented to the syllabus so these were two things which are i thought uh, mainly important for mains thirdly a thing which helped me uh, apart from mains uh, answer writing and note making was looking at toppers copies because um, apart from the whatever test series you'll enroll yourself in or whatever feedback you will get, get, give that is also important you'll incorporate the next time you write test but thirdly um, toppers copies help you in understanding what possibly got those people those marks right so it's possible that you may not like one one person's copies or another person's copies but out of a, a, a group of five or six that you can you know explore there'll be two or three things that you can incorporate and sometimes people don't understand what's going wrong uh, people are giving attempts after attempts they're not getting good marks and that's because mainly they don't, they they um, 
keep on sticking to the things that got them those marks so it's important to get out of that cocoon look at what other people are doing and possibly learn from anything that is being given to you so in that way uh, toppers copies of certain subjects of uh, you know certain examples that i used to find in ethics copies i used to a, a quote i found so i used to use that an example i found somewhere else i used to use that structuring of answers those things also i think you can um, they're all easily available uh, you can go through them and add to your answer so in any way next uh, preparation for current affairs so this is again a question that is regularly asked how do you prepare for current affairs uh, there's too much there's too much to do um, i personally relied uh, mainly on the newspaper so the newspaper was my uh, companion throughout the entire preparation and i personally felt it helped me a lot uh some people do not so rig uh, rigorously rely on the paper they use other uh, avenues but i personally relied on the newspaper um, it helped me a lot for my mains preparation it helped me uh, i think in a subconscious way for my prelims preparation also because there are concepts things that you are constantly reading which go in the back of your head i did not make notes for it for prelims but i made notes from for it as i had already told you for my uh, mains uh examination topic based syllabus based notes so i just like to say that get into the habit of reading the paper it will help you in some way or the other and um as we'll talk about later about the uh, interview preparation as well that at that point you can't uh, neglect the newspaper at all sometimes you have to rely on more than one newspaper to get uh, opinions but it's better to get into the habit of reading the newspaper because uh, sometimes in the monthly compilations or yearly compilations you get the facts but you are not able to get into the bottom of it you, you don't get opinions as such or an anal analysis which sometimes you i think you get from newspaper um, editorials or any other article that you find on specific issues so try to get into the habit if you're not able to understand it take help of someone initially and it will be it's very natural initially people take 2 hours 3 hours to go through the hindu go through the indian express so it's absolutely fine take that time but over a time cultivate a habit of uh, reading only the important parts you can leave out the political bits uh, for the preparation you can leave out certain other things and if you orient yourself to the syllabus you'll understand what to read and what not to read so the newspaper i used to follow i used to keep uh, adding it adding to it adding examples adding notes uh, to my mains notes that i was making um secondly uh, my other source for current affairs was the yearly compilations which i used uh, mainly for the prelims for the mains what i used to do was apart from my mains notes i used to just go through indexes of the magazines sometimes and you know just add so any sort of magazine that you're using there are uh, too many available so any magazine that you're using i used to just look at the index anything which was missing in my notes i used to use that so use it according to how you want to so yearly compilations for prelims and thirdly uh, my notes so my notes i used to make and um, we had made a certain group also a, a self study group three four people we used to divide certain topics make notes of them and use them towards the end so that was my strategy for current affairs my only advice is keep it limited don't because there's a lot to go in uh, read in current affairs stick to any one source and uh, believe that it will work out because self belief is also very important in this examination self doubt is one of the biggest things that you face at every level you're all thinking acha this book is not good enough my preparation strategy is not good enough this um, this you know this particular coaching or anything we are always questioning yourself but um, just have that self belief that whatever you've chosen is uh, going to get you there if you have you know uh the correct reasons the correct strategy and uh, your materials basic materials are right um then uh then was my strategy for optionals so optional um, firstly is the choice of choosing your optional so according to me uh, some people have asked me how do you choose your optional and you know some people had thought that history was not a scoring optional initially so i was also told you know even if you have history as your um, background try to change it some people have changed it already because you know history is not that scoring and uh, maybe you take sociology maybe you take something else you will get more marks um so i personally think that this is not true uh, there have been people from all different uh, sources and different optionals who have got marks there are people in the top 20 from economics background who has uh, who have gotten marks uh, from um, 
from hindi lit- uh, from hindi literature from sociology from uh, political science from medicine so these are things that you know people say that economics may don't get marks history may don't get marks medicine is very very vast so just make sure that whatever you choose as your optional you have an interest in it because an optional um, you have to put in a lot of hours you have to you know consistently read those things read extra books uh, write answers and that will not be possible if you don't have interest in that subject so first and foremost make sure that you have interest in the optional that you're going for if you're say from an engineering background which some people say that you know they have a problem with because um, say i had history as my uh, background i did my graduation in history so i took history i was comfortable with it i had an interest in it if you are not from any of these backgrounds if you don't want to take any sort of engineering as your optional subject what you can possibly do is uh, just go through uh, roughly the books of um, uh all of these things just roughly go through sociology go through history and see where you find yourself you know more comfortable with secondly apart from interest is material and guidance of a certain sort because i feel each option has a slightly different strategy and slightly different things that you need to keep in mind so any sort of mentor or any sort of person who has cleared the examination in that subject you can ask that person ask another person for its pros and cons so take every optional see its pros and cons see which pros you can work with see which cons you can work with and then come to an optional for history um my personal challenge in history was even in this year even i was very very jittery even before i was giving my final optional papers was the vast syllabus so i think that was a personal challenge that i had balancing it with my general studies preparation uh, that time management again you have to figure out yourself before the uh, mains i used to divide mostly my day into half sometimes that half more than half was given to history and in the end i still wasn't uh, very happy with the revision that i had done of history so it's just i think uh, what maybe help was um, my my note making even in the last day even the, even in that one hour there were certain things that i hadn't done so i revised because i had short notes i revised in the one hour that was given to me before between the two papers so that also i could used in the last thing so note making really helped me according to me uh, practice a revision of those notes helped me um so that i think worked out for me in history i had a certain love for the subject so that sort of background also probably helped me um that uh, so strategy for optional i feel depends from subject to subject so if you have and we i think we'll have uh, a interactive uh, question answer session at the end so if you have any specific uh, questions that you would like to ask about my optional or any other thing you can ask because each optional i feel has a different strategy and basically time management i think so which comes to the next topic as well time management is crucial in this examination and even though these things may seem the most boring you know time management revision all of this but i think it these are the things which actually work out in the end and that time management can be different for different people some people you know can can study for hours at a stretch and not get tired some people do need those regular breaks but whatever it is make sure that you are accountable to yourself make sure it's not external accountability it's not you know you don't have to be accountable to your parent who saying kya padhu 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 but make sure that you know this is something for personally what i used to do was i did not have very clear cut you know uh time tables in the sense ki acha itne ghante ye padhungi itne ghante ye padhungi roughly time tables i did have but morely it was in terms of ki acha is hafte tak ye khatam ho jana chahiye ab wo kaise bhi mera khatam ho raha hai if there were days when i did not feel like studying at all i used to completely put away my books and chill in the true sense of the word or do anything uh but when i used to study i used to like do it with my you know literally tan and man and not think about um, anything else so those things those ways of studying you need to figure out yourself um we are ways of taking breaks ways of motivating yourself you need to study uh, figure out yourself there are too many distractions in today's day and age so some people some of my friends completely cut off from all social media that also works for some people if you have the will um for others so for example me i did not completely cut off from social media but i did not use it say for a uh, long hours the day i used to sometimes keep my phone away or use it very sparingly so if you think that you cannot use your uh, phone so ask your friend to say keep it away for 3 uh, hours or 4 hours and tell yourself that if i complete this i'll give myself you know uh, this break or this reward where i can use it say for uh, whatever purpose and then come back to it so use find figure out ways where you can uh, do this yourself and um, whatever works for you but make sure that there is an inner sense of accountability you are the only one you are responsible to you are the one who has chosen a certain goal for yourself and it's your responsibility to complete it 
um so that is something that must be kept in mind in terms of time management but time management is important you cannot ignore it you need to know uh, when to complete the syllabus when you are you know you'll start preparing for your answer writing when you'll start preparing for mains when you'll start preparing for uh, uh prelims so 3 4 months before i used to stop uh, preparing for mains before my uh, uh prelims examination before that uh, initially uh, after my prelims examination the early few days i used to keep for ethics then i used to start preparing my uh, optional strategy uh, so those things that i think you have to figure out yourself according to how you work and how well you can balance things um then and revision again revision is important at all stages of the examination be it prelims be it uh, mains then um, i think um, thirdly uh, we've talked about prelims we've talked about mains we've talked about optionals now we come to the interview uh, part of the preparation and i think it's still um, a far away thing uh, because i believe that some of you and most of you have started beginning your preparation or are thinking of beginning it but um, as i said it's an integrated preparation the only thing i think uh, in terms of current affairs that becomes different for the interview is that uh, you um, you have to have opinions also of things you can't just know the facts you need to know causes you need to know consequences you need to sometimes defend what is happening you can't just get away by reading monthly magazines you need to read the newspaper you can look at uh, so in terms of opinion formation some things that i would suggest some people have a problem talking or feel that you know you know stuff but you can't say it out loud in a group of people some people are shy so those things you can start working on from now onwards also you can start you know uh, taking part in group discussions sitting with a group of friends talking about any topic which is happening in the news and seeing other people talk so uh, looking at uh, say rajasabha tv there are uh, certain discussions which happen any sort of other discussions i used to sometimes listen to google podcasts uh, there are things Uh, so there are lots of podcasts by certain newspapers so indian express has this thing of three things by indian express so any topic which is going on in the news they talk about it in detail so listening to these things having those discussions with a group so you get out of this inhibition of not wanting to speak and don't be afraid of saying out the wrong things because among friends this is the only place you can or among say teachers this is the only place you can where you can correct yourself so even if it's far away these are things that you can start doing it will even help you develop your personality in the long run so um start having these group discussions if you think that you feel shy speaking uh, try to talk in front of a mirror some people are advised to do that if um, they uh, are not comfortable doing that so firstly in terms of content read newspapers read uh, develop opinions on things have discussions look at videos hear podcasts try practicing these things try pr practicing answering questions uh, apart from that the detailed application fo form that you get that you fill uh, towards the end there are certain sections for hobbies there are certain sections for things that you've done in school uh, so every single word you need to start uh, you need to prepare for i think for that you can you know uh, think about a little later but i'm just informing you that let's say you're from odisha so you'll have to prepare about um, about the state about uh, you know uh, the sex ratio the uh, the cultural importance of the state all of those things you will have to prepare for you might be asked questions about that so the detailed application form uh, form uh, in terms of hobbies some people are uh, asked you know how do you develop hobbies or you know can you make up hobbies so i would suggest that don't make up hobbies uh, only for the application form uh, try to cultivate those hobbies from the beginning of the preparation or just like i think generally also i think there's not only studying which is uh, there to life there are things that you should uh, develop a personality of a certain sort engage in whatever uh, be it a sport be it any activity be it any craft singing dancing anything so that i think it also gives you a break because uh, like as much as i'm standing here and talking now it's a very it's a very strenuous process it's physically draining it's mentally draining and you need these uh, like an off time also in between so develop uh, cultivate a hobby from early on also it will even if you want it will help you in the interview think of it as that also but generally also i think it will help you if you develop something apart from uh, only studying so those are things that you can keep in mind for the interview as for the last uh, time when you enter the interview hall uh, i think calmness of a certain sort is important is important self confidence is important and those things you'll cultivate uh, when you gain the content when you gain the knowledge and when you start practicing and doing these things from early on so uh, apart from your knowledge it's also a test of your uh, 
character it's a test of how um, you know calm you can be in stressful situations so that i think is my advice for the interview uh, apart from that uh, this was the academic part of it the academic strategy the do, do's don'ts how i went about my strategy my content for all three stages uh, of the examination apart from that i think uh, you need to understand and ask yourself why you're giving this examination and setting a goal uh, is important so i believe that some of you are preparing some, there are may some of you uh, maybe some of you who are uh, who have certain other goals in mind so just make sure that you set your goal for yourself whatever you want and ask yourself why you're doing that because that is something which will sustain you throughout the preparation and motivation is something that you have a dearth of at times a abhi uh, the results have come or something happens you, you everyone is pumped up you think you know i'm going to get a top 10 rank i'm going to get a top 20 rank one month goes away and that uh, motivation goes down so that motivation should be internal you should know why you're doing it because when and there are those down times when you are down in the dumps when you are questioning yourself you need to come back to why you started in the first place so that i think is the first and foremost most important thing that inner motivation why you are doing it you need to be very very clear uh, if you are not doing it for the right reasons it's probably good to step back but uh, just remember why you are doing it so setting your goal once you have set that goal it will also give you the motivation to work hard because even though uh, there are different strategies different ways of uh, reaching your goal in this examination you have to work hard there's no way working around it whether you whether you are doing it by slogging 18 hours a day whether you are doing it by doing 8 hours a day but doing it consistently you have to work hard there's no easy way out of it it is a very very tough examination let me not mince words it's a very uh, highly competitive space as well so um, you have to work hard but that motivation that you get um, by getting to know you know the way that you can serve the country or uh, the avenues that will be uh, available for you in terms of uh, ways you can contribute to people around you that is a big enough motivation to keep you at it for those long hours so um, hard work is very very important uh, however much you try to uh, run away from it uh, time management revision all of that i said uh, but also hard work uh, can also be in various ways you can work hard at doing certain things and still not get the desired results because maybe you're not going with the right strategy so apart from hard work that hard work should also be in a certain direction and that is where there is an importance of guidance of mentorship of a certain sort of knowing the direction where you're going so make sure that however you work around that strategy be it uh, through um, a mentorship in a coaching institute if you are uh, choosing to do that or a mentor that you have uh, around you or a person who has cleared the examination or if uh, there are other sources as well whatever it is make sure that you are following the correct strategy and uh, that hard work is being put in a certain direction make sure it's not being spread out as i said keep your sources limited keep your uh, direction limited so that you know you can easily uh, more easily reach that goal um apart from uh, guidance mentorship in a certain direction after the hard work and after all of that uh, is uh, just going through the content is the practice and evaluation so for practice um, any sort of um, uh, tests that you go through test series be it for prelims or for mains and more important than the just the exercise is the feedback so using the feedback not just taking the feedback as it is but using the feedback the next time you do that self evaluation as well so there is an external evaluation and self evaluation in terms of how much you've improved in the past one month things that you need to work on things that you think are done and focusing on the things that you have left out so practice and evaluation and um, th- things that are not talked about uh, apart from the academic part is the emotional balance and emotional stability that you need to maintain because it's however many times i repeat it uh, this motivation these ups and downs will there'll be constant ups and downs during this preparation and um, to to deal with those downs you need a certain emotional balance you need a certain stability uh, at that time and these things are often not talked about but the stress is also really really uh, too much there is uh, parental pressure not even just parental pressure there are people randomly from uh, you know uh, distant relatives who have got to know you are preparing for this examination and they ask acha uska kya hua aur uska so there is random sort of uh, stress as well but you need to be accountable only to yourself 
right and so coming back to yourself so what i used to do uh, when i used to be stressed at times or i thought so it there are different things for different uh, people so whenever i used to feel stressed i used to take really long walks in the park or any sort of nature thing that i wanted to do i used to eat um some of my foods the nice foods that i liked some of my favorite foods i used to order them or i used to read a book watch some of the movies that i liked so getting um, in the immediate sense you can figure out your ways to de stress uh, in the long term i think you need a positive environment around you so a positive group of friends sometimes helps to push you even if you're coming down so i was lucky in that sense thirdly obviously your parents uh, are a great source of support uh, so for me i was lucky enough in that regard as well where uh, that positive push was always uh, being put i was never made to feel feel that pressure of not performing or not doing well enough uh, but even people who do not have that sort of support people who don't who are living completely alone who do not have the positive environment of friends or parents around them um try to look inwards it's easier said than done um but try to look inwards try to understand what you're doing figure out ways of de-stressing whatever it is uh, learn uh, try to understand what your priorities are in life how you can you know try to achieve them um so those are things and i think most importantly i feel what gives you an inner sense of satisfaction is giving your 100% and like let's not mince words there the success rate in this examination is very less so there are lot of you and lots of people who give this examination who will not succeed in this examination but that does not mean that you do not succeed in life because there are various other avenues in which you can give back to society i have friends who have uh, exhausted all of their attempts but are doing very very well in other aspects of their life so as long as your goal is set in terms of what you want to do there are various ways in which you can serve people around you make sure that if you've chosen to give this examination and it's something that you want to do make sure that you give your 100% so at the end there'll be no regrets even if i did not clear this examination this time i would definitely have been sad i would definitely have been heartbroken but at the same time i would have been content with myself that i did all that i could and uh, the idea of um, nishkam karm that we often talk about it's i think it's very important uh, when um, the karmani vadhikaristi ma falishu kadachana you give your 100% and then leave, don't worry about the result all you can do is do what you can with the right strategy with the right strategy with the right direction don't uh, put your hard work randomly into the air or but with the correct guidance with the correct strategy give her 100% so that at the end you don't you you're not questioning yourself you can't think ki acha agar main us din ye kar leta agar main shayad uh, wahan hi wahan nahi jati ya fir uh, thodi mehnat aur kar leti uh, those questions i think you should not have with yourself and i'm sure that uh, if you do that uh, there'll be various other ways and in various other walks of life also apart from the civil services uh, that you can contribute to society that you can you know be kind to others because i think kindness is something that uh, gets you far in life um, be kind to yourself as well be kind to yourself be kind to others uh, that's all i can say and i'll just like to say all the very best for all your future endeavors